Hello everybody, welcome back to Power Director Made Simple. Today's video is about the use of keyframes in Cyberlink's Power Director 365 for 2024. You've probably heard the term keyframes before, but maybe you didn't know exactly what it meant. If you've watched any of my videos before, then you've seen keyframes in action. Here are two simple examples from my recent videos. Now that first one is simply a zoom in directly to the center of the screen without any position movement. That was all done with keyframes for the scale parameter. Now the second one zooms in and moves to the left side of the screen. That was done with keyframes for both position and scale. Now that we know what they look like on screen, let's ask the big question. What exactly are keyframes and what do they do? Well first, let's define what keyframes don't do. They do not change a video or audio clip or any other video object. What they do is change the properties of how that object is to be displayed to the viewer. So let's take a look at how we can create some keyframe animation in PowerDirector. I'll first delete the examples that are on the timeline. And I'm going to start with this terrific looking bowling ball and drag it down to track one. Now my intent is to make it move from the left side to the right side and eventually make it rotate as it moves. I want to change the duration from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. The reason why will become apparent in just a bit, but it all has to do with math. I'll select a clip and hit F2 to open the advanced editing window. The first thing I'm going to do is shrink down the bowling ball to a smaller size. I can click on one of the corner gadgets in the preview window, or on the left side menu, I can move the slider gadget for either a width or height adjustment until I get the size that I want. On the left side menu, the height indicator is somewhere around 0.3, but that number is not really important for this demonstration as it's whatever size I think looks good. Now I want to move the ball across the exact middle of the screen. I'll move the bowling ball up to the left of the preview window, somewhere up near the min middle. And when I am exactly in the middle and on the left edge, both lines will turn purple when I'm there. Now here's an important item to be aware of whenever you want to create a straight line movement of any type of object. I want this to be a perfectly flat straight line movement. I need to make sure that I maintain the Y position value of what is currently shown at the starting position, which is 0.5. Now just to show how simple keyframing can be, I'm going to create only a beginning, end, and an ending keyframe. I'll make sure that the playhead starts at timecode 000. I can create that first keyframe by either clicking on the left side menu in the position category or I can go down to the timeline at the bottom and click on the keyframe diamond on the position line. I'll use the one at the bottom and click on the white diamond to create the starting position. A small red diamond is created at that position. It is red right now only because the playhead is at that same position. Next, I'm going to move the playhead to the very end at the time code of 4 seconds. I'll click to create another keyframe for position. Now, keeping the playhead on my second keyframe, I'm going to move the bowling ball all the way to the right to my ending position. The right edge will turn purple when I'm there. Now, with the playhead at 4 seconds, a keyframe created and the bowling ball in position, that tells the computer exactly where and when my ending position is to be. Now all I have done so far was to specify the beginning frame and the ending frame of the motion. The computer then calculates all of the frames in between those points. That's the beauty of keyframing. Next, I'll return the playhead to the start and hit play. Now 
Now, there is one mistake that I intentionally created here. Did you spot it? Look at my ending position and notice the Y value at that position. It is not 0.5, which was the starting position value. This means the movement was not perfectly flat. Although it was difficult to tell that the bowling ball was not moving in a perfectly flat line, sometimes that small error is noticeable when moving text or other objects that have to align with one another. So let me correct that right now. I'll make sure that the playhead is at my end of four seconds and the key keyframe indicator has turned red. I'm going to move the bowling ball to a Y position of 0.5, which I can tell when the middle line turns purple. The Y value on the left side menu now indicates 0.5. I'll restart and hit play. Now, the movement was perfectly flat. Oh, what's that, you ask? Don't bowling balls roll as they move? Well, okay, let's add some rotation keyframes as well. We'll move back to the starting position at time code 000. I want to have a keyframe at every 90 degrees of rotation, which means there will be four keyframes of rotation, plus the starting one for a total of five keyframes. But how can I tell when I'm one-fourth of the way through or three-fourths of the way through? I have a purple line in the middle at one-half. Am I supposed to just guess about those other values? Well, with the total duration of four seconds, the one-fourth, one-half, and three-quarter marks are easy to figure out. One second, two seconds, and three seconds. But what if I had left the duration at 5 seconds? What is 1 fourth of 5 seconds? Or what is 3 fourths of 5 seconds? Now that's why I made the duration only 4 seconds. The math is much easier for this demonstration. If you are not good at math, then there is another easy way to figure out those positions. A grid line pattern can be used to suit our purposes. Let's switch to a 4x4 four four grid pattern. Now, notice there is a grid line at the 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 quarters, and at the ending of, at 4 seconds. So now, with the playhead at the starting position, let's add a keyframe to mark the beginning of the rotation. Next, I'm going to move the playhead to the 1 second location on the timeline. I'll reposition the bowling ball directly on the grid lines. I'll create a keyframe for that position. Then I'm going to rotate the bowling ball 90 degrees. Notice a keyframe was automatically created at that position for the rotation. Then I'm going to move the playhead to the 1 half or the 2 second location. and then I'm going to reposition the ball to be exactly on the grid lines. The new keyframe for position was added. I'll rotate the ball 90 degrees. The new keyframe for rotation was added. I'll move the playhead to the 3 quarters or the 3 second location and then reposition the ball to be exactly on the grid lines. A new keyframe was created for position. I'm going to rotate the ball another 90 degrees. And a new keyframe was added for rotation. Finally, I'm going to move the playhead to the ending 4 second location and reposition the bowling ball to be on the grid lines. The previous keyframe remains for our ending position. So now I'm going to rotate the ball the final 90 degrees, completing one full revolution. A new keyframe was created for rotation. I'm going to return the playhead to start and hit play. Everything looks good. 
I'll click on OK to return to the main editing window. Next, I'm going to drag an image of a basketball down to track 2 and set its duration to the same 4 seconds. Now here is a good tip that you should know about because it might save you some time in the future. I'm going to right click on track 1 and select Copy Keyframe Attributes. Then I'm going to right click on the basketball clip and select Paste Keyframe Attributes. A window will ask me if I want to replace the current settings, so I'll select OK. Next, I'll go back to Start and hit Play. And just like that, the basketball now behaves exactly the same way the bowling ball did. And I did that without entering any keyframes for this object. All I did was copy those keyframe attributes from the bowling ball. So now let's try something different. I'm going to repeat all of that with a color board onto track 3, and I'll set it to the same 4 second duration. I'm going to resize it to a smaller size, and then center it on the screen. And once again, I'm going to copy the previous attributes and paste them onto the color board clip. Next, I'm going to hit F2 and open up the advanced editing window. With the playhead at timecode 000, I'm going to create a keyframe for opacity. And then move or make sure the opacity slider on the left is set to 100%. I then move the playhead to the end at 4 seconds and then add another keyframe for opacity. But this time, I'm going to move the opacity slider to 0%. I'll move the playhead back to start, and then hit play as we watch the rotating blue color board. I'll click OK, and I'm back at the main editing window. Now let's try the same thing using a video clip. I'm going to click on My Media and then Stock Media. I'm going to drag down to the clip something that shows a close-up view of either some aliens or maybe some of my friends. And I'm going to set the duration to the same four seconds. I'll copy the attributes from the color board and paste onto the video clip. I'll move the playhead to start and then hit play. Now, why does the basketball show at the end? Why not the blue color board which is on the track immediately above the video? If you look at the timeline, you should notice that the opacity lines of both the blue color board and the alien video were reduced to 0%. The next thing in track priority to display anything is the basketball, which never had its opacity reduced. When you look closely at all the various parameters that can be keyframes, they include things like position, scale, opacity, rotation, anchor point, free form, and 3D depth. Now using these various settings, you have lots of potential to move any video object around on and completely off the screen. If you are new to keyframes, just take one small object similar to what I demonstrated with in this video and practice all kinds of movements using all of the parameters mentioned above. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. As always, thanks to all of you for watching. 
If you like what you've seen, please click that subscribe button.